I thought I'd put this little presentation together as kind of a wrap up to our conversations that we've been having about Industry 4.0. Uh, what I'd like to propose to, to you is that for, I'll call it a modest investment, and I know that everybody's financially in a totally different place, and for some people this is like out of the question, and for some people this is, would be um, manageable, but I'm gonna suggest for under, like well under $1,000, you could um, develop some really serious skills in like a half a dozen of these different technologies, uh, Internet of Things, Cloud, Systems integration, additive manufacturing, autonomous robots, and big data. Uh, so the only ones that I haven't thrown in here are augmented reality and simulation. And I kind of see those as separate things. Um, as we've done in the exercise, you could do simulation for free using some of the software I've shown you. And augmented reality is actually, you could tie it in with your simulation. Um, the Jamson models that we were using don't do AR that if you upgrade it to FlexSim, you can actually build models that you can present and fly around or travel through in, in an AR environment. So for very little cost, you could actually add simulation and augmented reality to this list. Okay, but I have a sort of a specific path in mind here um, and I'm, I want to share with you kind of a project that I'm working on because these are things that I personally feel that I need to expand my skills on. You know, we've talked about Industry 4.0 kind of uh, becoming more and more prevalent in the industry. And, and so I really, I felt for myself and I would, and I feel the same way for you that if you're a, uh, an engineer, practicing engineer in a modern industry, these are beneficial kind of technologies to to understand. And, and I don't mean just that I've read about them and I could describe them. I mean, you really need to have a working knowledge of these things. Um, and I genuinely think that there's an opportunity for for all of us, myself included, to learn this stuff without a huge, huge investment. So um, if you put up with me, this is what I would like to kind of explore with you guys today. And, and please do jump in and, and let's have a discussion about it. Okay, so one of the things I'm launching in t uh, to talk about is the Arduino, because this is something that I may have mentioned in some of my lectures, but I've never really... Um, talked about it in any detail. You know, I've talked about simulation, we've talked about 3D printing. So those are something that you have some sense of, but, but for, I'll suspect most of you, um, the Arduino is a brand new thing. Yeah, so there, so technically the Arduino and the, it's not the only game out there, like I said down here, there's things like the Raspberry Pi, there's a, another company, <laughs> they call it Adafruit. Um, there's all, there are several others. There's not tons and tons of them, but there's other competitors to the Arduino. But this is a, so it's a microcontroller. Um, so it has a little computer chip. Um, the Arduino uses this 18 mega microcontroller. So you have a little con computer chip on board. You got a little USB plug so you can communicate, uh, like upload programs to it from your computer. Um, you can plug in a little battery to it to power it, it doesn't take much. And, and then the magic of this thing is that it has a series of inputs and outputs. And, and they're just open plugs like this. So you, can, um, so you can plug sensors in and it will read them. You can plug motors in and it will control them. You can plug switches in uh, and it will read them. You can, um, you know, almost anything you can think of, whether it's digital or analog, you can send information into the board. 
then you can program the computer to, you know, look at these signals, make decisions on them, and and take some action. And and the kinds of actions you can take with one of these things is almost endless. Anything from just really simple, you know, controlling lights or controlling relays, which you know, if you can control a relay, it means you can really turn it off, the, turn the world on and off. Anything in your house, anything in a computer, or sorry, anything in a company, you can turn on and off. Um, but you can also communicate externally. You can communicate through Bluetooth or you can communicate through Wi-Fi. So the Arduino is programmed um, in a C slash C++ environment. Um, the programs are called sketches. Uh, so it's a pretty common language, right? A lot of people know uh, some version of C or C++. The libraries that this thing uses are unique to the Arduino, that, that, but there's tons and tons of libraries already built in. So very simple commands can do some very complex things. One of the reasons that I uh, first started introducing the Arduino to process quality engineering is I think it is a great way of getting hands-on practice on the quality side, which for me requires you know, a lot of sort of measurement data or taking various inputs um, into the, from processes and what have you and evaluating those inputs and evaluating the quality of the process or the quality of the product. And so you'll find in you know, modern companies, they have all kinds of electronic sensors. They don't have people checking everything. They have computers checking all this different stuff. And um, so I'm showing on the screen here, one of several different kinds of kits that you can buy. This kit that I'm showing or the package I'm showing is currently sold for about $36 Canadian. It's a 37 piece kit, which doesn't count every individual resistor or sort of thing. It's a genuine 37 pieces. And you can see just at a scan, um, there's like lasers that you can control. Then there's light receivers that can detect the like photoresistors that detect the light. Um, there's motion sensors, this, they don't call it a motion sensor, but this, this little white cap dome is like a security motion sensor that you might have in a home or an office. Um, avoidance is a little uh, light out and a light detector. So if there's something blocking the path, it picks up the fact that there's something there. Um, temperature, humidity sensors, infrared, um, infrared emitters, uh, um, things to detect magnetism, detect sounds, uh, detect uh, the presence of steel, that kind of stuff, flame sensors, um, potentiometer, they call it a rotary encoder. Like, so tons and tons of stuff you can buy. Oh, and this uh, an ultrasonic sensor, uh, which people use for like range finder, it can measure the actual distance to different objects. So you buy a, um, some form of Arduino, which will be well, certainly less than $50. Um, and I'll show you some very, very inexpensive ones. And then you buy a kit like this and you can make tons and tons of projects and get practice in measuring stuff and reacting to information and building sensor systems, building quality monitoring devices, what have you. And I'm focusing on quality, the kind of stuff that you might do as a, you know, a process quality engineer. But of course, you know, if that's not your thing and you're interested in other kinds of technologies or other sorts of systems, you know, this is super, super flexible. Uh, as well as sensor kits, you can get other sort of starter kits that include an Arduino. This one includes the Arduino Uno, which is kind of the original or the sort of the base model of an Arduino called this Uno, but you get, then you get these breadboards. And if anybody's dealt with electronics before, these are nice. Um, uh, so you, you have a breadboard like this. So for example, I, this is a little um, touchscreen 
a, a touchscreen display that you'd get in a cell phone. And so I bought that to experiment. And on the back side, it has a bunch of pins. Uh, and and so the pins, you just shove it into the breadboard and then it allows you to use jumper wires and make your connections to whatever device, the Arduino, the controller, power supplies, whatever else. So this makes it really easy to work with. You don't need to do any soldering. You can, like you can just experiment stuff up and wire it up pretty, pretty quickly. And they give you a bunch of, so they give you a breadboard, they give you a bunch of jumper wires, different resistors, but resistors is the only thing you need sometimes to control voltages on circuits. But for the most part, all these things all come with these, you know, all these wires and you just shove them into the breadboards. This kit also costs about $36. And with that, you got motors, servo motors and, um, and stepper motors and things. Um, and you can, you can generate all kinds of really cool projects. But, you know, we're often, we're asked as professors, is there a textbook that we want our students to buy? And obviously we try to find eBooks so that you don't actually have to purchase a textbook um, but, you know, at any point, it's, it wouldn't be considered unreasonable for me as a professor to say, yeah, you know what, um, uh, you know, I, yes, I do want you to buy uh, a textbook, you know, whatever it is, for this course, um, and, you know, this guy is pretty inexpensive at $42. Instead of asking you to invest $42 in buying a, a book, I'm thinking about asking my students to invest $42 and buy an Arduino starter kit. Professor, I think that would be brilliant. Of course, it would be more interesting to work uh, than reading the textbook. Yeah, okay. So, absolutely. I, I totally agree. Um, For me, I would, you know, the, the ultimate goal of walking out of one of these courses is you've developed new skills, uh, not just knowledge, right, but actual skills. And this is why I do these sorts of assignments like build a simulation model, build it, <laughs> use AI to create something. Because then you walk, and I know it's harder, but then you walk away going, hey, that was kind of cool and <laughs> sort of worked. And, and at least I tried it. I'm not like I'm not trying to sell you an Arduino. I'm just I'm trying to expose you to opportunity here. I, I'm not affiliated with any of these companies. This is not like a YouTube video where they sent me all this stuff and I and I got to promote it. <laughs> I'm not sponsored by Squarespace. I'm not sp sponsored by Arduino or anything like that. Uh, I just happen to really like the technology. There's the so that's the original Arduino. So that's, or the or Uno, that's this one sort of here in the middle left. That's, that's the Uno, which is a pretty reasonable size. Um, and that's the Nano. So it's like this, the size of my thumb. Um, this is a uh, third from the bottom. So it's not even the smallest one. You can get a pro mini or a mini uh, or these little gammas, which are about the, you know, just a little over a, an American quarter, more like a two Canadian toonie kind of a thing. Uh, but, but to me, you know, that's brilliant. That that's a little microcontroller with a USB port. You, you plug your USB port into your computer that provides this with power. You can communicate to it and, and this will control tons of stuff. This has, this is the nano that I have listed here on the slide. Uh, it's got 14 inputs and outputs. Um, and, and you could buy three of them for 21 bucks. So about $7 for one of these guys. And that's a full programmable microcontroller that you can use for all tons and tons of projects. And depending on the project that you're into, there's, um, there's reasons to pick and choose between these, like this guy up here, the upper corner, this mega one adds 
extra inputs and outputs. So instead of, um, oops, instead of 14 IO pins, inputs, outputs, it has 54. So you could control tons and tons of devices. You could have, um, you could have door switches on every door in your house, <laughs> and every window, and have this thing sitting somewhere monitoring the entire house and knows everything that's going on and whenever anybody goes through any door or goes through any window or something like that. You know, like it's, it's kind of crazy. Um, but there's also uh, specific units um, like this one, which, uh, well, let's see, is that even on here? Uno, Ethernet. Now uh, this one doesn't even show up on this list. But this one's got a, uh, this is the maker. Hmm. That's funny. It's not even on the list. This is the, um, this is the maker, which uh, includes Wi-Fi built, built into it. So this will, this will communicate through, through Wi-Fi and onto the cloud. Um, so starting to develop some, or play around with some IoT stuff. Excuse me, uh, is it uh, a patent? This is... Ah, no. So that's also one of the great things about it. I'll just come right back. To, I, I didn't mention it, but it's raised a really important piece. This is an open source. Arduino is an open source technology. And so their job, their, their intent was not to build this to sell it. Like it wasn't like Steve Jobs and Apple where, hey, we created this thing in our you know, in our garage and we want to sell these things and make ourselves rich. They want to create something to use for classes. So they created this device. They made it open source. They got all kinds of help with it. And, and it's taken off since. So you can buy like this genuine Arduino, like I've shown on the screen here. Um, but if you, if you notice, this one's made by a company called Freenova. And, and there's tons and tons of them like that. Like there's, countless um, companies that are making their own versions of these and that all the structure and stuff is all open architecture all the designs all the programming all the prints all the microcontrollers all that stuff is all open source so looking for Arduino projects and and where it's being used you'll find Arduinos being used all over the place for everything from hobbyists to instructors to companies like I would have I would have no, personally, I'd have no qualms um, building an Arduino system that, you know, act as a, a monitoring system for a, for a company. Like, you know, a company like Toyota or Honda can probably, you know, they can afford more dedicated equipment and they would be getting, um, you know, some very high end stuff, but, but for a smaller company or something like that, no worries at all using this technology. So there's, I mean, there's tons and tons of people buying this stuff. Uh, the electronics now are cheap, cheap, cheap. You were... Um, because I was surprised by the price. It's very, very well, cheap. It, <laughs> it's insanely cheap. Like, you know, this is 36 bucks, and that includes the Uno, the power supply, the joystick, an acoustic ultrasound, temperature sensor. Honestly, I forgot what that... I don't know what that one is. Uh, three motors... LCD display, your USB port, potentiometer, um, a little like TV remote kind of controller, cables in your breadboard. For, like for 36 bucks, you got, <laughs> you, can be, you can be busy for weeks just playing with the stuff that you got in a $36 kit. And I, that's how I got started. I, I bought a starter kit, not this one, but I thought I bought a similar starter kit. Um, Yes, but, but this is just it. It's super, super cheap, which is why I feel comfortable in sort of talking to you guys about it because it's for such a small investment. I think there's so much to be learned with this kind of stuff. You were talking. It's made in Italy also. It's and made it's in Italy and it's not cheap. Uh, yeah. It's, uh, yeah. Unbelievable. <laughs> and even my, well, my Free Nova one is probably. So my free Nova one is made in China. Yeah. You, uh, I think Ahmed, you're the one you got into SCADA, right? Or is it SCADA? Yeah, yeah. So t to me, like this is SCADA. 
you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, so yeah. that is cheap now. Because I remember I am somehow old. Uh, I was graduated in the 80s. We're making analog computers. <laughs> we are buying resistors, capacitors. It was hugely expensive. Yes. Uh, to these days. And even if it is, uh, it's a budget, you know, before just uh, mm -hmm. think to build any electronic circuit, it's, you have to think twice. No, I agree. <laughs> this is what... This way now, this is, it looks like material cost now. <laughs> You're exactly right. Yeah. And, and what you can do with this stuff is, is so much more than, you know, any kind of electronics you could build in the, whatever, in the 80s or the 90s. And so I'm, I'm like you, kind of in the, back then I was also building electronic circuits when I, like, when I was going through high school, I was building electronics. Um, but it was exciting you, to, when Intel came out with the triple five timer, you, you know, yeah. Yeah, oh, hey, this is exciting and I can actually have a clock in my system or keep track of time on my project. And so, yeah. so I can turn a light on for exactly 30 seconds and then turn it off. <laughs> and, <laughs> and now, you, like you would, you'd laugh at, at something so... Oh, we got this old kit for $36. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so, so I want to show you just a project. The project that I'm currently walking through is um, just building a really small five-axis robot arm. Um, and from an electronics point of view, this is what I see is needed. You, you got to buy. Um, you have to buy microcontrollers. So I'm running. I'm working mine off of a Nano. So here's. Seventeen dollars for three. You need a power supply. There's ten bucks. Uh, this is a voltage regulator. Ten dollars. Um, the one I'm doing is controlled by Bluetooth, so the Nano doesn't have Bluetooth built in. So you got to buy sixteen dollar Bluetooth module. Uh, four servo motors um, for thirty six bucks. Well, you only need three of them. Uh, some breadboard, you only need one of them, you get three. Um, some jumper wires, or you could just go <laughs> strip some wire and, like, you don't need to buy jumper wires, but okay, if you're lazy, buy eight bucks worth of jumper wires. And then smaller servos for the, uh, like, the little wrist and grippers, and there's 16 bucks for another five of these. Um, so when you add up now, you'll see that my math doesn't add up. I'm kind of splitting the cost and saying you don't need one nano. You only need three of these, three of these. You don't need one breadboard. So if you if you bought this, the parts that you'd need to make this five-axis robot would be about 80 bucks. Um, but you can also go cheaper. Like, you don't have to... There's, there's cheaper modules that do Bluetooth built in now. You don't need to buy a $10 power supply if you already own a five dollar or five volt regulated power supply like a charger or something for your laptop or whatever um okay it does require some programming you're, you're not going to get away with uh playing around in the world of the arduino and automation and all this stuff without getting your hands a little bit dirty in programming but i i think anybody going into industry now and, and expecting to never have to program, you're really limiting yourself. Like there's so many, um, you know, there's so many jobs that require programming or, or I would say there's so many jobs where having a bit of programming experience is a serious asset. If, if nothing else, just to troubleshoot what's going on. Like that's what they uh, spoke to a Honda engineering manager uh, a little while ago, and, and that was one of his points, is I don't need, when I'm hiring interns and so on, they don't have to have programming experience. I'm, I'm never going to hire, I'm not hiring engineering interns to program, but I do expect them to be able to troubleshoot, and half the time, or a lot of the time, the troubleshooting requires looking at the program, understanding what the program is trying to do, what is it expecting for inputs and outputs, that kind of thing, and then grab a voltmeter or go do some test equipment and find out what's going on. So you have to, you don't necessarily have to create programs from scratch, but you do need to be able to modify programs. And, and this is what you'll find with the Arduino is 
you don't have to do a lot of programming from scratch. Because it's open source, like the, the utility that most people use, the Arduino editor, it comes with tons and tons and tons of examples where you go online and you download the code for your project and then maybe you have to do a little tweaking or something like that. Um, but it still requires you to be able to read it and kind of work around and, and start playing with things. So there's some programming involved. Uh, so I wanted to, just, so here's a, just a quick video um, because we're talking about the internet of things. And so I want to point out that it's actually pretty straightforward also to, um, to add one of your Arduino projects to, to an online, like, to have its own um, IP address and that be able to control it through the internet. So it's just a quick video. Oh, okay. It's 44 minutes. Ago. Hi there. I've been working on this project for a few days now, and um, I finally got it working, and I thought I'd put it on YouTube in case someone else wants to do something similar. I've got an Arduino talking to an ESP8266 Wi-Fi module. That's transmitting through my home Wi-Fi to the cloud, and then I'm using the Blink app on my iPhone in order to uh, control this uh, LED and to monitor the temperature from this uh, sensor. Uh, so here I can turn that LED on and off from my phone and this is the temperature that I'm getting from the sensor. If I grab the sensor it's going to heat up a little bit. So this is this blink app that he's talking about you just load it up and it gives you a blank screen um, and then you you say, I want to add some devices, and you end up with, you take your pick. You can add sliders and buttons and gauges and tons and tons of stuff to, to read, in, read data from your Arduino or control stuff that's plugged into your Arduino, control relays, control lights, control motors, whatever you want to do. And this is literally a drag and drop if you, so I want to, add a slider, I just click on slider, and now I've got a slider, and then you uh, click on it, and it just asks you, what pin is the slider connected to, or what, what are you controlling with it, what pin is it connected to, how do you want it to react, what do you want it to be called, that kind of stuff. Um, and then when you, so you basically you create your app on your screen, and then um, it'll generate the code for it and that's actually and I got that this code that I'm showing on my PowerPoint slide was generated by this app so um, uh, sorry well I was also <laughs> okay I was also using the Arduino IOT cloud thing um, which is a, so it's another thing like blink but made by Arduino uh, same idea you you design on a screen like what you want for buttons and controls and things, and then it generates this code. So I didn't write any. Ugh, darn it. Sorry, like I didn't write any of this code. It was generated by the the little sort of app developer. Um, so the tools that are out there right now are are just fantastic. <laughs> really, just genuinely fantastic. Um, Okay, and actually, while I'm at it, then uh, so MIT has also created a programming environment to to be able to modify or work with things like the Arduino. And so the, the gentleman who uh, designed the project I'm currently working on used this MIT app to create his own app to create or to modify or to uh, control the five axis arm with your cell phone. So there's like you just, as you want to move, uh, manipulate the robot, you just use the sliders on your phone and you can save the settings. So you can move it to a start position, save, grip, save, pick up, save, move, you know, lower, drop, release, return to home, save. And then you can just press run and it will cycle through that program that you created. You know, so, and this is why I say, I, like, I didn't create this. I, 
I downloaded the app from the person who created the, the project. He shared all his files with me or with the planet, right? um, which makes this stuff really approachable. You still need to do some troubleshooting. There's still tons and tons to learn. Like I'm finding this is stretching my abilities um, to do this. Like I'm finding it a challenge enough, but, but it's a brilliant learning experience to, to build your own thing on the internet of things and um, so on. So I've got a, I'm going to, I'll upload this slide deck, but you know, blink is one seems like a nice common, really super easy way of creating your own IOT device or your own internet of thing thing. Uh, does require some wiring, but it's not overly complex. Um, you know, this is certainly an easier circuit diagram than a, whatever a radio or something that we would have, like this is way easier than something I would have built 20 years ago. Um, a circuit that I would have built that would do half the amount of cool stuff that this one does. Um, then now, here, let me come back and focus. Ooh, there we go. So you don't have to watch me all blurry. Um, right, but they'll, so they'll give you circuit diagrams and it's, you know, it's in a really easy format to follow through. The, this is the little robot arm that I'm trying to put together or build, provided all of this CAD models. And so this is where we've, We've taken additive manufacturing in this course, and to me, this these two things pair really well. Something like an Arduino, Raspberry Pi, Adafruit, whatever, uh, some microcontroller system, and then 3D printing. Because you know this this looks ugly as sin. Like that's not going to get you any points. But if you put this in a box or a proper shape container, then it's already a much better project. And if you if you can build it as part of a working system uh, that controls doors or levers or mounts to something or clamps to whatever or clips onto the, you know, whatever your project is, um, you know, then it's that much more impressive. So again, I didn't design this five axis arm, somebody else did. Um, and he's provided the full instructions, downloadable. So this is, these are all the pieces, um, the printed pieces that you would need to make. Um, and so I'm working my way through making these things. Um, this base, I just printed. Uh, so there's my version of the base. And this took about 13 and a half hours to print. So it's not fast. You can see that the next piece was eight hours and these two are, uh, these arms were about six hours each and three hours for these guys. So it takes several days of investment of printing time. Uh, but again, the cost is not much. A um, hundred grams, so this base is a hundred grams of PLA and one kilogram, so 10 times as much, costs about $30. So this part cost me $3 of plastic. And yeah, so I don't know, this is maybe $12, $12 worth of plastic or something like that, you know? Um, I'll sh so here, let me, you don't need to look at my happy face anymore. Let me just swing around. Right, so this is, that's my, that's my little robot arm so far it does not work yet i am still troubleshooting it um but this will so this will end up sitting on top like that so this can rotate this will this can rotate 
this guy rotates. Um, so it's, uh, I've been printing every day all week <laughs> and this is as far as I've got. And, uh, and I've got some clear, um, PETG material that I've, uh, I've got on order to make the gripper. I thought it would be cool if the, if the gripper on this was, um, uh, something other than orange. So I also, um, my printer is a uh, is the one that I got on my PowerPoint here is the Creality Ender 3. I chose it because it's got a really good reviews. It's really robust. Um, it's got a pretty decent print volume, um, print bed size. And this is where I, so this is where the price goes up a little bit. You know, if you're if this is something that you might want to do, um, this is more like a three hundred dollar investment. Like the, and this is one of the cheaper printers you can buy. So this is 300 bucks. Uh, it's pretty easy to be um, you know, $400 or $500 or something like that for a, for a printer. But, um, and then, yeah, and then a spool of the material. I don't have one within in reach. Uh, but a spool of material is about 30 or $36 Canadian. That gets you a kilogram. And so like I said, just, I'm not, I'm not going through a full spool for this particular project. You, I think I mentioned it, like you're gonna to have to do some troubleshooting. You're gonna to have to uh, have my old, um, I can't find my digital meter, but so I've got my old school analog meter. Uh, but you're gonna to have to do some, you know, basic electronics, kind of get used to circuit diagrams and a bit of wiring, that kind of stuff. Um, and, and a bit of space to work. You're gonna have parts all over the place. Um, having some basic tools is helpful. For this kit, I discovered you needed um, uh, some mounting hardware. I needed uh, to be able to thread some, ta you know, tap some holes in the, in the printed parts and what have you. So I've done, you know, you have to take some extra measurements. You gotta do some extra work. You have to do some extra engineering, but, um, you know, this is where I would, this is kind of where I'm leading to is that all the skills that you would practice in doing something like this, of course it depends on the job you're going for, but many employers, this is the kind of stuff that they're looking for, is people who can, like especially if you're looking for like an engineering intern or process quality engineer, you know, they're looking for people who are self-starters and will go out and, and they're going to assign them a project, like any sort of a project and trust them to go and solve it. Like go through all the hurdles, take care of all the little details, do all the troubleshooting for whatever their particular project is, mechanical, electrical, software, whatever. Right. And come back with something that works. That's gold for an employer. And so, that kind of thing also doesn't show up on a resume. You can say that you're a troubleshooter. You can say that you're self-starter. You can say that you're good at project work, but nothing beats a demonstration. And, and so I, I know I've done it myself in hiring engineers. If they come to me with a, you know, some have actually physically brought in stuff to show me and others have shown me you know, videos or uh, drawings that they've made or something that represents the project that they build and and that speaks volumes and they can say i created this or you know i designed this part I, I took a design from somebody else i modified it for my purpose or whatever like this t tells me that you got patience and initiative uh some technical skills troubleshooting skills persistence right and a little bit of enthusiasm and and for me, like knowing that you are, most of you are going to be in the job market soon for sort of a professional career. Like this is the best advice I can give you, quite honestly, is is don't just walk in with a resume with a piece of paper, because everybody else walking in has a piece of paper too. Walk in with something else. Walk in with more. And if you, especially if you're looking for a, a better job for a better company, you are going to need more. So this is just sort of 
me trying to pull together a lot of the topics we've been covering, Industry 4.0, and and trying to make it sort of approachable and interesting for you. So I'm I'm really interested in hearing, you know, what your thoughts are then. Beyond, is this something you think you might get into? Is it pie in the sky? Is it practical? Is it reasonable? Is it interesting? What do you think? 